Sydney School 7th grade mathematics students. Welcome back for week 5 of the KCS Safe at Home Mathematics video series. My name is Gary Petko and I'm your Knox County Schools Mathematics Supervisor. And for this week 5, we'll be talking about recognizing and representing proportional relationships. As in the past, you'll be able to see these videos either online at our KCS Safe at Home site at the Knox County Schools website or on East Tennessee PBS television station. They air Monday through Friday all of our videos, but on specifically on Tuesday is when you'll see the math videos. The math video, the seventh grade starts at 1.30 and I believe it repeats throughout the day. And they'll, the video we have for you here will go along with a packet that you either picked up at one of the mill distribution sites or it'll go along with the, the, the packet that is also online. You either have the hard copy of the mill distribution site or online. You have the answers in there and we'll go over each one of the problems through here. So let's get started. Today we're going to introduce this week's topic. We'll work through each problem as we have in the past. We'll try to end with a weekly challenge and then talk about some extra available student resources that, are, that you can use not only help you with the concepts in this packet but also as you move along in your math career. This week's topic revolves around a seventh grade standard ratios and proportions. Recognize and represent proportional relationships between the quantities. Identify constant of proportionality, also known as unit rate, in tables, graphs, equations, diagrams, and verbal descriptions of proportional relationships. What I love about this concept, oh, so many things to love about this, well, math in general, so many things to love, but this particular, this is where we really start visualizing mathematics. The French mathematician, Rene Descartes, He's also a philosopher. He was the one that really came up with the concept of the coordinate plane, which I believe was his way of being able to see mathematics tangibly, to take the algebra you've been doing, to take the, the multiplying, the dividing, all those concepts, and let's put them on paper to visualize it. And that's what we get to do with this one, proportional relationships. We get to visualize a relationship between two objects and what's really happening. We can visualize it through graphs, through equations, through diagrams, or just verbal descriptions. Proportional relationships show up so many different places out there in nature and in, in everyday jobs from architecture when you're talking about scale drawings to art to the way plants grow, certainly like the sunflower, the way it grows and repeats its pattern or proportional relationship. Oh, there's so many things. Uh, the sale price or the price of an item, the unit rate of an item, if you want to know if a two liter of a soft drink is cheaper to get than a six pack of the same soft drink, you're looking at the relationship between the two, how the proportional relationship, the unit rate. Oh, there's so many different things that we can work on with this one. This connects to a sixth grade standard that seemed a lot, have the same type of language. You recognize unit rates. The difference between this standard and what you learn in sixth grade is at this point, we're going to, in the sixth grade, you were given the ratio and said, here is the rate at which these two variables uh, come together. This is, you're going to have to create that constant rate, the constant of proportionality here. You're going to have to create it and then use it and apply it. And I think that's even more challenging from giving it to you to you actually creating it. This happened in seventh grade in a very module, uh, I believe it's module three or four is a section, lesson seven, chapter seven in your book. It's probably happened right around spring break, if not a little bit before spring break, sometime around then. And I think it's some exciting concepts. So let's work through the, the what we've got going on today. Let's talk about some of the, the key words in this standard. Recognize and represent proportional relationships. That's written in blue. And then a constant of proportionality written in red. Well, proportional relationships, what does that really mean? There exists what's called a proportional relationship. Proportional relationship meaning two things relating. A proportional relationship between two variables if the ratios of the y-coordinate to the x-coordinate remain constant. What's constant mean? Constant means doesn't change. It stays the same. I have an example right here where we've got two variables or two things that vary, but they sort of relate. We've got time in seconds and your heartbeat. If you were to chart, if you were to put your fingers on your pulse, on your neck, try to figure your pulse or your heartbeats, and you ask yourself, how many times is my heartbeat every second? We've got a chart here that's, in this example, 
someone had six heartbeats in four seconds, but then they had nine heartbeats in, I'm sorry, six heartbeats in four seconds, nine heartbeats in six seconds, 15 heartbeats in 10 seconds, and then 18 heartbeats in 12 seconds. That's a table that lists how the heartbeats are changing in relationship to the time. We also have a picture of it on a graph. Remember I talked about Rene Descartes wanted to talk about visualizing what was happening. This is what's visualizing it. Well, it's a proportional relationship. If I can take the ratio, which we've talked about in previous packets, but also in, in your sixth grade and early in seventh grade, if the relationship of your Y variable, and in this case, it's a heartbeat, to the X variable, which is time, if every time we look at the values in the table, if that relationship, that ratio is the same, or it stays constant. Well, let's check and see. The ratio of six to four is ex simplifies to the same as nine to six, as it does to 15 to 10, which it does to 18 to 12, all simplify to 1.5, or they're all equivalent fractions. So if that exists between a set of values, then that relationship is a proportional relationship. Now, what about that constant of proportionality? Well, the great thing about it relates exactly to what we just said. Let's use that same set of data. Again, this is from section 7, 1, and 7, 2 in your textbook. The constant ratio that exists, if we have a, a proportional relationship, then there is a constant ratio, and what that constant ratio is called is the constant of proportionality. In math, we're not super creative when it comes to naming things. Constant of proportionality, the constant meaning staying the same, that value that, st that real stays the same in this proportion. And in this case, because that constant of that relation ra ratio stayed the same, can't talk right now, that ratio stayed the same, the value that keeps occurring is constant, and that is called your cost of proportionality. We use the letter K to represent that. So K, in this case, is equal to 1.5 or in fractional form is three over two. So your constant of proportionality is that constant ratio that exists in a proportional relationship. We're gonna use those two key concepts to work through our problems. Now your packet this week, again, looks different. It looks like week three. It's a little bit smaller in quantity because we're working on a spiral review that'll get us ready for next week. This is five problems that all revolve around that one standard we just mentioned. It's a seventh grade standard on ratios and proportions. Five problems that all revolve around the concept of unit rate, proportional relationship, constant proportionality. We're going to work each one of these four problems and go through them and try to explain it, and they'll get us ready for next week's packet. So what I'd recommend if you want, you're more welcome to stop the video now if you're looking at this online and work some of the problems, and then we'll proceed through with some of the uh, solutions. All right? All right, let's get started with problem A. Problem A, Craig earns extra money as a lifeguard. He earns $37 for four hours, $64.75 for seven hours. Identify the constant of proportionality and write an equation for the proportional relationships. We got two problems going on here. One, first identify the constant of proportionality and then what is that equation? And later on, we'll talk about what does that equation do? So let's see how this one works. As always, I'm going to read through that and underline some key words. As look at that, it says identify the cost of proportionality. In order to determine what it is, in math, identify that constant of proportionality means determine it, find it out, and, and explain it with mathematics. And then part B is write an equation for this proportional relationship. Okay, yes, again, hold my pencil kind of funny, kind of hard to see it at the very first. And now we're going to move past that and get on to our problem. Okay, that constant of proportionality, we said it's that constant ratio. Well, we represent it with the letter K as a reminder. So that constant of proportionality can be found mathematically with by finding a ratio. It's the ratio of your Y's over your X. Now, which is the Y, which is the X? More times than not, time is usually your X. In this case, it's the X is your independent variable and your Y is your dependent. So if I think about this, my the amount I earn depends on how many hours I work. It depends on it. So 
though y value is my dependent or my, the amount that I'm earning. So the cost of money earned. And my x is my hours. So if I can find that ratio between this proportional relationship, and if it's staying the same, that is my cost of the proportionality. So as I said, y is your cost or your money earned, and x is your time and hours. So k is the ratio of y over x. So let's go back to our problem and see the different y's and x's we have. So 37 over 4. If I were to simplify that through division, 37 divided by 4 is 9 and 25 hundredths, or $9.25 per hour he is earning. Let's see if it stayed the same with our next value that he earned. He earned $64.75 in seven hours. So if I look at that ratio, let's see if it stayed constant. If I divide 64 and 75 hundredths by seven, I sure enough get nine and 25 hundredths or $9.25. So that relationship between our variables stayed constant and that's actually called our unit rate. He is earning $9.25 each hour and that is our constant of proportionality that is k nine and twenty five hundredths pretty simple huh look at our set of variables let's divide our y by our x if it stayed the same with each set of y's and x's we have a proportional relationship now let's talk about that equation part b write an equation well the equation for a proportional relationship is pretty simple it's y equals k times x. If it's a proportional relationship, it's y equals k times x. This is what will allow us to find future values. In our previous part of this problem, k was 9 and 25 hundredths. So if that's the case, then quite simply our equation is just y equals, substitute 9.25 for k, 9.25x. There's our equation, which will allow us later on, if we said he works 10 hours, could I determine how much I'm going to make, or 12 hours. So an equation allows us to find future values. That's part A and part B. Okay, let's move on to part problem B. Problem B. Problem B, C, and D. The next three problems all use the same, what's called question stem, or this Dylan the same topic and our question stem here is the super shop is having a grand opening sale today's special includes two shirts for $25 four pairs of pants for $36 and two dresses $44 so we got shirts we got pants we got dresses all oh, everything we're buying must be back to school shopping okay so let's see part B is talking just about the shirts Several clothing items were sold during the grand opening sale. A table of some of the shirt sales with missing data is shown. Data is information. Complete the table. So they've given us some situations. It looks like that table, if somebody bought two shirts, that's $25. But that's all. And if we bought four shirts, that's $50. Now, we want to know how many shirts would buy if it cost $87.50. And then the last, what if we bought nine shirts? How much would that cost? So the question is if C represents the cost in dollars and S is the number of shirts, write an equation that correctly identifies the relationship between the cost and the number of shirts. So it's back to writing that equation. Write the equation of a proportional relationship. Well, to do that, as a reminder, same procedure. We have to find K first. We have to find what is that constant of proportionality and then use that K in our equation. So let's see how we work this one. Okay, if we move through this, once again, always underlining keywords. So we got shirts, we got pairs of pants, we got dresses. But this problem in particular only talks about the shirts. So if I look at that table, I'm wanting to complete the table. Now, once again, I like to use X and Y as my variables. X is the number of shirts and Y is the total cost. So once again, my constant of proportionality is Y over X. Now, you might ask, I'm a stock cook, how did I know shirts, the cost was X, and the number was, I mean, the cost was Y, and the number of shirts was X? Great question. 
it goes back to that concept of independent and dependent variables. I'm going to ask myself in my head, what depends on what? Well, the, does the, num the cost of the shirts depend on the number that I buy? I would think so. So the amount that I finally pay, the cost of all my shirts depends on how many I buy. So the dependent is cost. It depends on the number of shirts. So the Y is the dependent and the number of shirts is X. So I'm going to look to see, I'll look at the table and see what I have, what ratio I have. 25 divided by 2, let's see what that ratio is. I just took one set of ordered pairs. And if I divide that, I get 12.5 or 12 and 5 tenths. But let's check with another set of values to see if it stayed constant or the same. So the next set I clearly have is 50 divided by 4 which is also 12.5. So I have a proportional, proportional relationship, and that is my constant proportionality. That's what K is. So I've got a little mini relationship where K is equal to Y over X. So let's use that to help me find some missing data. In that third row, they've given me a Y value. I need to find the X, but I know that relationship of K equals Y over X. So let's fill in what we know. K is still 12.5. And that's equal to the ratio of y over x. But in this case, y is 12.5 over x. So how I solve that, I just essentially need to divide 87.5, divide that by 12.5, because I'm really saying 87.5 divided by what number would equal 12.5? I would get seven. So if I bought seven shirts, it would cost $87.50. Let's look at the last value in that table. I'm now given the X. I gotta find the Y. If I, I if I've got that 12.5, it's still equal to the same ratio. It's equal to some value over nine. So I'm thinking about that. What number divided by 9 would give me 12.5? Well, algebraically, I could just solve that equation by multiplying both sides by 9. And I get y is equal to 100, move my finger, and $12.50, or 112 and 5 tenths. So that allows me to find the, the next missing value. Now let's go back to C, the, in the second part. We're going to write the equation. The equation is y equals k times x. But remember, in this situation, the cost, which is the y value, and the s is the number of shirts, which is the x value. So we're going to switch variables up, but it, the relationship stays the same. So if k is 12.5, my equation looks like it, it's y equals 12.5. Times x. But if we want to use the variables that the problem is talking about, because sometimes we like to use variables that represent the actual uh, content in the problem, I could say instead of y, I could use the letter c. It'd be the same thing. I'm saying c represents cost equals 12.5 times instead of x, I'm going to say s. I don't like to use s a lot because it looks like the number 5, but it does work for us. Okay. Let's see what problem C looks like. Problem C, same question. The super shop is having a grand opening sale. And this part was several pairs of pants. Now we're looking at pants, not shirts. Several pairs of pants were sold during the grand opening sale. And we've got a chart. And this time we're visualizing not with a table, but with a graph. Write the equation for the cost C in dollars per pair of pants. What is the cost of eight pairs of pants? Let's see what we've got going on right here. Underlining key things, this time I'm talking about pants. Now look at that chart and, and, and that graph, and instead of having a table of values, I'm now gonna look at the graph and see if I can create some table of values. Sixth grade, they were given to you. Now you're trying to create them from a table. And I'm gonna look at some, what I call some nice, neat whole numbers, non-fractionals. And then once I create, uh, 
find those, I'm going to use that to create my equation. I know my equation is C equals K times P. C is my Y, which is the cost, times K times the number of pants, P. Well, let's see if we can find some values that would create a table. If I look right there, it looks like that I've got, if I bought two pairs of pants, how much would it cost? It looks like it would cost about $18, if I'm not mistaken. If I look again, if I bought four pairs of pants, it looks like the cost would be $36. So I can take from the graph and create a table. Much like I had in the previous problem. Now that I got a table, let's create that, find that cost and proportionality. It's your ratio of y over x, or in this case c over p. And let's see what that cost and proportionality would be. C, oh, I, I wrote x down by accident. C over P. I'm going to choose one of those sets of ordered pairs. doesn't matter which one because it should be the same. If I do that, I get choose 18 and 2. I'm going to choose 18 divided by 2, and that equals 9. So my equation is C equals 9 times P. Now, what's, notice on that graph, Something really neat. If it's, a, if it's a proportional relationship and it's constant, notice how that line is straight. That's going to be something you'll learn in, in eighth and ninth grade. What's the cost of eight pairs of pants? There's where the equation comes in handy. We got the cost equals nine times the number of pants I buy. I just need to substitute in. C equals nine times eight. That means the cost would now be $72. $72 if I bought nine. So we can see it through the graph, I can see it through the table of values, and now I've got an equation. Perfect. Okay, let's move right along. Problem D. The super shop. Oh, uh, let's, let's go back to problem D. By the end of the day, dress sales. Now we're talking about dresses. Will be plotted on a graph. Determine if each ordered pair has a proportional relationship. Well, we're going to look to, we've got four examples. We want to know, do they have the same proportional relationship as what's given with two dresses for $44. Let's see how that one works. If we look at that, I've got to find out, since I'm dealing with dresses and I'm given two dresses of $44, let's find out what that cost of the proportionality would be. That, re that ratio would be if I bought two dresses for $44. What would that cost or that unit rate be? Well, cost over the number so that K would equal to cost divided by number, cost of the dresses, over the number that I buy, which we have 44 divided by 2. Which if I look at that, that should be equal to 22. So $22 for one shirt. Now we're going to look at the table to see if if each one of those, which one of those four would have that same unit rate or that same constant of proportionality? Let's look and see what it would have. Now look at the first one, 56 and 3. Let's see what that ratio would be. K in that case would be 56 over 3. Hmm, I don't think that's going to give us 22, but let's look and see. Designating the variables, K, 56 over 4 over 3 would equal 18.67, which does not equal 22. Okay, I'm going to let you all work the rest of those, so you do the same thing and see which one of these would actually equal 22. If it does, the answer is yes. If it does not, then we'd, we would say no for that one. Okay, problem E. Now we're talking about one day Mary buys apples at the store. She paid a dollar, two dollars, four dollars, seven dollars for apples on different days. We've got a graph down there that shows that relationship. One day Mary paid five dollars for apples at the same store. How many pounds did she buy? We got a, a young mathematician, Kate, from Hardin Valley Middle School that's going to work this problem for us. Um, our teacher is Miss Morrow, and I think she would be proud of you. So let's see what Kate says on how you work this problem. Take it away, Kate.
Okay, it looks like Kate's sound is not working, so I'm going to talk through it as she's going through it. Kate is doing an incredible job. Sounds kind of quiet, but I think we can get her working on it. Kate's looking at that, and she starts looking at the points on the order on the graph, and she starts recognizing that if she looked at the ordered pairs that the points represent as she goes down, here's what she notices. The first one, the first point on there, the first what looks like a dot, has the ordered pair 1 and about 1.5. So she's going to look at that ratio because it looks like they're all lining up in a straight line. And she sees that the first one has 1.5 over 1. That gives me a ratio of 1 and a half. She's going to look at the next ordered pair that looks as the ordered pair 2, 3. She's going to take the y and divide it by x. And she divides the y by the x. She gets 1.5 again. And keeps doing that for all four of those. Look at all four of those ordered pairs. If she divides the y by the x, she gets 1.5, which is staying the same, which is staying constant. That allows her to write an equation. And if she that equation would be y equals 1.5 times x, or the weight of the apples is equal to 1.5 times the cost in dollars. So by doing that, the weight is 5 times 1.5, or the, the cost of proportionality times the number of, now the cost in dollars. So her answer would be 7.5, which is 7.5 pounds for the weight of apples. Kate, thank you so much. I'm sorry we couldn't get your voice in there, but you did an incredible job. Thank you so much. All right, folks, that's your five problems that you've got this week on proportionality, unit rates, and proportional relationships. As a, as a reminder, some additional resources you have. You've got Ernie Roberts on MathLine, PBS. It's every day from 6 to 6.30. He will answer your questions about math, anything from kindergarten to calculus. Call and give him a number, 1-844-NUMBER-8-686-2378, or you can connect with him on Facebook, Math Online on Facebook. He's there. Give him the math problem. Ask him about a math concept, and he can help you out. As always, parents... Many ways that you can help with math, looking at proportional relationships, looking at how things compare, playing card games or board games with your, with your children. Ask your child to explain the math skills he or she's working on in school. Compare uh, items, which is taller, which is smaller. There's so many different ways that you can use mathematics. And as also as a reminder, more resources are available, not only with, at this site for your packet, but we have also websites and other uh, places you can go to learn about mathematics at our KCS website, Student Resources. Thank you so much for, much for uh, staying with me on week five videos. Again, my name is Gary Petko, your North Kansas School's mathematics supervisor, and I've had a great week, and I look forward to seeing you next week.